Um, some vulnerabilities might be used to retrieve the identity of a user. Uh, there, there were some examples uh, also in 2010 where uh, browser vulnerability with, uh, were used to, to recover a uh, user identity. And um, the most, um, I think, the most realistic example is uh, when users disclose uh, themselves their tracking, uh, their, their, um, the, the list of websites they visited. So basically, when you visit, when you tweet about a website on Twitter, or when you uh, use plus one or Facebook, and you publicly disclose which website you're visiting and when you're visiting them, um, there are uh, there are only few person which visited exactly the same list of websites than you. Um, if you have the, if you have the list of uh, if I if you have the list of websites that I visited previously because you extracted from Twitter, um, and you have an, uh, an, uh, an anonymized list of uh, websites that have been visited by someone, and you, s you, you notice that uh, this list corresponds to, to the, the link I tweeted on Twitter, um, you might realistically assume that uh, I'm the one uh, who, who visited this website. Is it clear or? Um, so, the solution uh, to, to that is to prevent tracking, because uh, the anonymization, it's, uh, once you give away the data, it's hard to find exactly how they can be misused by, by an entity. So, uh, pre the, the, the best solution is actually not technical, it's policy-based, and we have to prevent tracking, um, so prevent the collection of data, of data at the source. Um, so, the do, do not track is, um, is a um, policy-based solution, which aims to say that if users want not to be tracked, they, sh they should be provided with a mechanism to express their uh, pri privacy preference. So uh, with do not track enable, when a, when a user go on uh, SF SFR, he, uh, he, is, he, is he downloads the same pixel after that, only he send a do not track error, and then double click will should normally, if it's compliant, I should not keep track of I keep any track of the data, and uh, as a re uh, one of the results is that uh, also the user do not receive uh, targeted ads anymore. But uh, that's not the sole effect. Is there a way to verify that? Sorry, is there a way to verify? There is that? no way to verify that because um, so um, uh, third parties keep collecting uh, data um, currently, but do not so. Uh, normally, the do not track specification should be delivered in June. Um, there are two uh, too many issues right now, uh, and one of them is exactly what are the permitted uses, because uh, third parties still have to collect some data to prevent fraud and to enforce the security of the system. Uh, so they, they still have the data. Uh, we're looking for a solution to, to be able to detect if they're still using, misusing the data. Or, and you, you cannot block a, a list of, uh, I mean, a tracker destination. So um, that's also well. Is it, that's also uh, that was one of the initial ideas. Actually, uh, what it's the one implemented by uh, Microsoft. That's uh, tracking selection selection list. Uh, the thing is, when you do that, actually, you prevent uh, you uh, prevent more than just tracking. You also prevent any uh, ads from being displayed. Uh, you pre normally you should also prevent Facebook from uh, tracking you on every website, but sometimes users like functionalities of Facebook Connect and stuff like that. So um, it's it's doing more than just preventing uh, tracking. It's also uh, preventing many things, many web services that are used by user. And um, and well, uh, pretty sure I'm really not happy with the solution because uh, already when they're not. Being, being uh, able to track users, they're quite unhappy because they are losing a lot of money. Well, they say they're losing a lot of money. Uh, if you prevent them from displaying ads on the websites, uh, it, it won't work. And, and this and is for, for for example, what what we uh, and the game from Firefox, for instance, to play the game and not uh, because it seems that the list of uh, players, uh, track, track of players, are known. Um, well, no, no, no. Well, if you go for example. Well, once it's known, it will change, right? So it's like fake with fake fake list. So <coughs> here you can see all, all of them. Yet there are many that are not known by. Can I ask you something? Is sure. there a, I mean, 
that's a do not technological question, but is there any not any I don't know, like European uh, policy against tracking? Or? Well, um, so the thing is normally Article 29, which is uh, the um, uh, European Data um, Commissioner, uh, said that uh, well they're waiting for for um, the do not track specification. Normally uh, they should uh, they say that tracking should be prevented when users uh, unless users give gave their consent to be. And so do not track will be a way for users to say, okay, I'm, I'm agreeing to be tracked or not. And, and so normally um, what, what we're hoping is that uh, the specification will arrive in time to, to be uh, enforced uh, by uh, European Commission. And uh, in the US, the uh, Federal Trade Commission is also doing the same thing. Um, so, um, one of the questions is, uh, how can we live uh, when we have DNT enabled? Because a uh, publisher won't be able to make um, money anymore, and uh, there are several functionalities that may be broken. Um, so, for example, preventing off form of tracking uh, will move media uh, advantage of personalization. Uh, for example, um, some users like to receive uh, personalized advertisements. Um, also, if we prevent uh, tracking in, on every website, many users will uh, ask the user to opt back in by clicking on the button or uh, giving their consent. So if we end up having all the website uh, having a small button uh, with, uh, uh, asking to users if they agree to be tracked, uh, it's, it's not going to work because uh, many users won't be happy with the user interface. Um, also, widgets are more and more used, like Facebook Connect, Google Plus, Twitter. Uh, they are more and more used to, to share data uh, between users. Uh, so there are two solutions. One of them uh, will be to have some uh, browser-based real targeting, being able to, to target ads without tracking users. And the other one is to let uh, users simply uh, opt back in to tracking, uh, provide some easy solution to, uh, to, to, uh, to allow to be tracked. To, to, uh, to, I don't track it. Uh, so, how can we uh, do targeting without tracking? Um, the, the, the main idea is to be able to profile users, to, to be able to keep the user profile in the browser. Um, so, every time a user is visiting a web page, we, find, uh, we, we, we would like to find what the web page is about, uh, what is the user's interest for this web page and to keep this data in the browser. So it, if it never leaves the browser, um, user privacy is not in vain. Um, and that should be transparent to users. Uh, users should not have to fill form about what, what, uh, what are their, their interests. And uh, then, when, when we want to download ads, um, well, we, we use private, uh, private information retrieval. We download more ads than what we actually need. And uh, we only show to users uh, the one ad that is relevant to them. So, uh, uh, for example, let's assume I'm visiting this web website, and I'd like to know uh, what uh, the, the main category, what the topic of this website. I extract some keywords uh, from the metadata of the web page, and from that, using um, some taxonomy, we're able to to retrieve that uh, these keywords are related to this one. And for this one, we're able to find out that they belong to this category of interest. Um, so we can then map this web page to this category. And so the categorization the solution we use uh, is based on uh, Google uh, categorization for advertisements. Um, I will provide some details. So, um, we categorize, uh, we categorize keywords uh, using uh, um, a categorization matrix. For, for each keyword we extract from uh, the web page, um, we try to compute a score for each of the uh, 600 categories that we have. We're trying to find each keywords, uh, a mapping between each keywords and the categories uh, defined by Google. And uh, we assign a score for each category. And based on, the, and we use the, the top score to, to define the category of the web page. Um, is that understand, understandable or?
So um, I, I, I take this example. Um, in, in, for, from this uh, web page, we extract these keywords, and um, then we have like a big matrix with for each entry for each each row we have um, we have a score for corresponding to the different categories that we're considering, and um, and we compute a score for each keywords and each categories, and then well we have basically um, a score for web page matching. Uh, Matching it to a category. And the browser does this? Yeah. And he computes everything, all the categories? And the so uh, we, we, we have the category, uh, we compute the category and uh, include that in, a, in the extension, on the browser extension. This is then uh, um, one time actually. And we, we just include the matrix in the, in the browser. And how do you find keyword in that page? So how do you extract, as soon as you have the HTML? In HTML, you have a lot of things like uh, at the end you might have some something to uh, some words that may uh, end up uh, showing your results in many so, so some fake words that are added at the end, right? Um, Which is was popular some time ago to in order to to promote your page uh, across multiple searches. So how do you distinguish between the keywords? Do you analyze all the content of the page? Or how do you you sub sub sample part of the? Um, so we just use the title, the URL. And the keywords in the metadata and the description also. Uh, these are just okay. So you do not process the page. No. So you do not extract either one, like for instance, and try to use the H1, H2, H3. No, that um, the content what, what the idea that we have, and that for future work, we would like to be able to monitor as a session. So, for example, if the user started by searching on uh, something on Google and then visited the web page, and then another one, we're trying to uh, to, to analyze the, the browser history to see, okay. Uh, he started being interested by that, and now he's moving like here. So it's probably the same session, and it's probably the same uh, interest that he is showing uh, in the different web page. Sorry, but delicious dead cannot crack me. If you ask delicious all the time with the keywords of the page that I visit, sorry. If if you ask delicious, oh, of all the pages I visit, well, so we, we we've done that once actually, and we just. Uh, compress that in the matrix that we include in the in the extension. So we we, we uh, oh the data are local. I mean, you have a big database yeah. extracted from the list. You don't do a no, online. No, we, we, we're not we're not asking everything uh, anything from uh, from uh, the issues actually. Okay, okay. Um, and this is quite uh, scalable because um, so we, we compute to, to compute the score between uh, a keyword and. Uh, and the category we use, we use cousin similarity, and uh, we we measure the number of co-occurrence between a keyword and, and the name of category. And uh, actually, we obtained a sparse matrix, so it's quite easy to compress it and include it uh, it's in the browser. I, I think the extension is about one one megabyte. So it's really small. Uh, so how do we uh, insert ads uh, in the browser when? Uh, when uh, the user goes on a web page, um, it contains a link to ad networks, like it's normally done. And the, the main difference is that instead of receiving only one ad, the ad network will send, will send 10 ads to the browser. And uh, the browser will select the one which is more, uh, the most relevant for user interest. And then uh, using some crypto, we are able to, to uh, maintain the information uh, without disclosing. Uh, which user queued uh, which which app? And what the contain list? I mean, the, now the web server has no information about the user's preferences, so we'll send randomly something. Probably what? not a good list, not a good ads. Uh, so the idea is we send ten ads instead of one, hoping that among the ten ads, one will be uh, of user's interest. Will, will be interesting for the user. So. For, for existing ads, we we convert we associate them to different categories and see uh, which is the most inter interesting category for the user. But if you have 600 categories, the probability that out of the 10, I mean, I don't know, it's well, low, no? no? It's, it's, not, it's not as accurate as it is uh, with, uh, with um, a real ad network. Um, but the main advantage is yes. You you're almost uh, discussing those things to the product to the ad network.
So it's not that, uh, that much personalized. Uh, it's still better than that. Is the, is the fix simply to send a very large group of interests that include more than what you're interested in and then do the matching afterwards? So, so Sorry? Would yeah. the fix be to just express a list of interests that are much broader than what you actually want yeah. and then do the matching afterwards? Will that get you better than that? To reduce the space of uh, possibilities. So um, you'll have to just Okay, you have to disclose some information to the to the network. Then. So it's obfuscated. You're obfuscating your interests essentially. Um, that would work. Yeah, right. That'd be a good idea. Um, so here, um, uh, if, if we uh, if we get uh, demonstration, um, so we would, if I go on this data, for example, is the extension enable? Uh, you can see that it's replaced as with, um, well, it's out of my interest. And uh, I can, well, normally my profile is uh, more about uh, web search, and so I receive uh, ads about technology. Right? And it's quite, it's quite quick, actually. It's quite fast, too. Good. So we made some tests. Um, we showed that, for example, on Slack, uh, it, takes, it takes longer to, to denote 10 ads than like just one. Uh, but um, but uh, web to render the page, it's almost the same actually. For for many websites uh, like uh, slash dots, actually the difference is not really uh, big. When you just download ten ads, or when you use uh, uh, put it only one ad. So how are you getting these ten ads? Because typically you're asking for one ad, and then the ad gets delivered. How do you ask for ten ads? You do ten sequential queries. Yeah. So you're and inflating it by that much. You're, you're so not waiting that much longer. That, that's that's why it takes longer actually because you have to generate one uh, you have to initiate one connection every time. Uh, if we will do it in the same stream, actually it will uh, I guess it will move much, much faster. And um, actually here for with right web, the thing is that there are many many ads uh, on the web page, and um, Firefox actually limits I think to uh, 24 uh, the number of simultaneous connections that you can open. So you have to wait for the previous connection to be closed before being able to download the next ad. Um, so the solution will be to not add to, uh, do not track enable all the time. Uh, for example, there was a recent uh, user study where they ask uh, to users when they will agree to be when they will agree to be tracked, um, and they give all this as uh, six six choice. Uh, so uh, it goes from uh, a friend as your of yours as an STD and uh, ask you to help find some treatment alternatives to simply crossing the web to read, to read the news. And um, so, well, just out of curiosity, how many of you are going to be tracking all these scenarios? And, uh, and number three. Sorry? And on the old scenario, except the number three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all scenarios except number three. Good question. Probably three. And uh, who will agree to be tracked on none of them? OK, so there are a couple of people who don't want to be tracked at all. And, um, and so yeah, in, in, the, in the panels, they, 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 did, they show that only uh, 5 out of uh, 48 um, wanted to be, uh, uh, never wanted to be tracked. And um, no one wanted to be tracked in all of them. Sure. So, and it also shows that users don't actually care about who's tracking them, but uh, what matters to them is uh, when they're tracked. So uh, the idea is trying to, to be able to say, okay, when, when I load a web page, in which type of scenario am I, and should I then enable to not track or not? And uh, so the idea is to use, uh, agnostic, well, the previous categorization algorithm we had to, to be able to, to infer uh, the topic of the web page, and then based on user's preference, uh, decide if we should if we should set to not track here or not. So uh, we think how it works. When I when I don't know the, when I go on a website, um, I don't know keywords. Same thing. I, I get the topic of the website and and then check uh, with a, a profile manager if I should set do not track for a specific web page. And if I don't, uh, I just send the, the query to the third parties with do not track set to false, and then I get uh, I get tracked and I get the personalized content. Um, so a quick uh, 
uh, that's going on uh, with the dynamic test recognition. So that's an, must, an, must be an ongoing work. Um, so the challenge we're trying to address here it, uh, Who is... Demonstrate? Sorry? Who demonstrates? Who does demonstrate? Um, so, well, this is during uh, Occupy Wall Street. Yes. <laughs> this is very positive, what you <laughs> Well, the thing is, um, so this woman was not aware, well, she was aware that the picture get, uh, <laughs> that she was featured. Uh, she wasn't aware that the picture got shared on Twitter, and she yeah, wasn't she aware. She was aware that she was not know her name as well. Well, they can find her name on Twitter, I guess, yeah. and because she's got fired for this picture. That, that, well, that's a, the bottom line of it, that um, we can obviously recognize her from, from the picture, so if we're trying to, to build a system that will allow users to say, okay, when I picture, I would like to have some control over how the, photo will be, how the, how the picture will be shared, and um, it, is there, whether or not my, my face should, should like appear on, on the picture, or if I, uh, or maybe I want, uh, she, will, she would like to remove it uh, from the picture. Mm -hmm. And the basic idea is, uh, when someone takes a picture around you, um, if, you uh, if you're recognizable in the picture, maybe we should uh, ask your preference directly. Uh, so there are one simple way to do that. Uh, it would be to have like, a, a big, big database of uh, all the faces that are uh, of people, like Facebook, and every time you take a picture, you go on Facebook, you try to recognize the user, and uh, if, you, if, you, if you recognize the, the, the user, then you ask for his preference. Um, well, there are many privacy issues there. Uh, one is that uh, face recognition is not working that well. Uh, mostly, with, uh, with using some information, you can, uh, restrict, you can restrict the set of users and uh, and even then, the, uh, the accuracy is about 30%, and even, even smaller. And also, if you have that, that big database of faces that you, you can query all the time, uh, it's a big privacy threat by itself. So what we're trying to do is to limit the number of uh, users that, have, that, might, that, that we should consider when trying to retrieve someone uh, tagging preference. So we, we use Foursquare and uh, other location sharing services to, to limit the scope of users that are to only the users that are around. So when I take a picture somewhere, what I do is that uh, I have to post for who's around me. I don't know the picture of people that are around me, and only consider this picture to for, for face recognition. And uh, if I'm able to recognize them, then uh, I check their pre tagging preferences. And if they're agreed to to be on the picture, then uh, I will. Uh, add their name on the picture, otherwise I can ask them if they want to be removed from the picture or um, check, the, check their preference most of the time. So basically you say that you can go around, find a girl you like, you take a picture, then the system tells you the girl name and you go to the girl and say, hey, how long do you do this? <laughs> she, if she, uh, she did, did, was it's checking on Foursquare, yeah, that, that will work. That's not how we use it, but that's what will work. Um, and so we, we have some prototype, uh, which is running here, but it's consuming most of the battery, so it's not working right now. Um, and so we were using uh, Android uh, APIs, Foursquare, and Face.com for uh, facial recognition. Uh, we, we did some tests uh, to verify that we were able to recognize correctly the user and apply the correct preference. And it did not work as, we, as good as we expect. Uh, we, we had only a dozen of users, and um, we were able to retrieve the correct uh, uh, users in only two, two cases out of three. So it's not, it's not perfect. Um, and also, well, processing time is quite okay. Um, it's only take only a few seconds. Um, and we also did the same thing with a larger database, not only containing users that were around, but also users, uh, also celebrities. So we added 700 uh, pictures in our database, and then uh, well, we, we had a um, su su success ratio of only uh, 9%. Um, so, as a conclusion for, for future work, um, well, on, on the not track, uh, what we'd like to do is to be able to, to uh, have more information about user's context. So, as, as, um, as, um, as we saw that um, using that, just a static analysis uh, of your web page is not enough because we have to rely on keywords that are said by uh, uh, web page uh, editors to, to be able to, to classify the, the web page. And I would like to be able to 
um, to have more accurate uh, context of uh, browsing. Uh, also, we'd like to estimate how much ads go to the user. So, for example, if you have a mobile data plane, uh, you pay 30 euros for uh, 3 gigabytes. It means that every time you download an ad, it actually costs you something. It's not free because uh, you have limited bandwidth. So, uh, we'd like to estimate how much uh, each ad co costs uh, in dollars to, to a user. Uh, for photo tagging, we'd like to improve uh, this recognition algorithm so because 66% it is not uh, quite good enough. And um, also, we're trying to work on privacy preserving data analytics and uh, yeah. smart return with that. So, so. so, thank you. Do you have any questions? the slide which you show the agnostic uh, system is that I'm not sure to understand what, what is the implication on the business model of the ads. Uh, the, the one in which you have the is that this one at the end there is a crypto billion token. So I'm not, I'm not sure who pays what in this in this uh, um, in so this so the um, um, the browsers and crypto being token to the ad network, so the ad network is able to, to uh, check uh, to, to pay the publisher. But will you pay, for instance, ten times more because you download no, the no, names? No. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the purpose of the token is to be able to charge the correct advertiser mm -hmm. um, and then give the money to, to the to the publisher. The, the idea of the token is uh, just to prevent. Um, well, you're going to have to pay 10, 10 times. So, so you, you, you keep the token to say only this one was. Yeah, well, when, when you send the ad, actually, you have a token, crypto token with it. And um, so the, the selected uh, ad, uh, we, we, we keep the token only for the one that, is, that has been displayed, and uh, we send the token later. So, so the AD network knows what, what has been displayed? Uh, not, not exactly. That's, uh, I was not involved in the crypto bar, but uh, I, normally we, we use some uh, algorithm to prevent that. So the, the, the ad network actually never know which one was displayed. Okay, but, but the right guy is uh, going to pay because only his ad has been yeah. uh, shown and so this basically turned out into some computational burden as a browser plus some extra. Uh, we, in some cases we may have to involve a trusted subparty between uh, the browser and the network. To, to, to be sure that um, there is no, to, to, if we want to do some auditing, uh, we, we, we have to include a first, first at the party. A question. So you, you mentioned that there are cases when some people actually want ads. So I assume this is when the ads are relevant to them. So with this system, how do you show that the ads being served up are actually as relevant as what you would get if you directly got them from the ad exchange? Um, so one way, one way to do that would be to to go on um, to add the profile and to to for for um, for each ad that is displayed get the main category of the ad and then compare that to the user profile. So if um, many times you have like um, an ad which does not correspond to your profile at all, you yeah. would be able to to say okay um, this didn't, does not work well for for this number of ads which will increase the number of ads that we receive uh, from the ad network to 20, for example. That's not quite the same as the click-through rate. Essentially, the, the quality of your ad is quantified by the click-through rate, how often you click on the actual ad, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how you'd actually measure it. I have trouble seeing how you'd do that here. Oh, actually, we are not. Um, so we, we can still use click-through rate, actually. We, we're not, um, we assume that as soon as a user click on, on an ad, it's OK to disclose his interest to the advertiser. So we, we can still measure the click through rate. Right. Um, there, there are several things that we're unable, not able to measure, like um, fre frequency capping. It's not working well. There are some photos that use prototypes that use uh, that also enable frequency capping, but uh, that's one of the many issues. Are we ready? So ready is to be interpreted. Uh, a bit, uh, an article that was stating that. Uh, the recall on the AD is very low. Basically, it's much lower than the. How many users click on an ad? 
very few. So the advertisement cost uh, on, on the internet is much more, li is larger than the advertisement on print newspaper because the, the gain that you get from this advertisement is much, the revenue margin is lower. Because nobody clicks and if you click, you don't buy. And it's more effective so to advertise things on the newspapers. And part of that, I mean, it was uh, one of the claim of the, uh, the paper was that uh, uh, basically because when you go, when you buy a, super, when you buy a, a newspaper, uh, you're reading something journalistic and then you might expect to find any kind of uh, advertisement. If you buy some fishing, uh, uh, news, some fishing magazine, you would expect to find things about fishing, right? Uh, and if you buy some technology related stuff, you will, buy, you will find the, uh, advertisement about technology. Then what you're saying is that, for instance, you have advertised yourself like a, a guy loving a geek, loving technology. So whatever site you go, you always have technology. Yeah. But then if you, okay, if an evening you're browsing on some esoteric stuff, then the geek technology advertisement for me, you will never click on it because you're not in the mood uh, in that moment to click on, <laughs> on the ad. So one of the things that everyone was saying that basically advertisement would be more relevant or more successful, whether it would be buying to the content on the page. So if I go to a fish site, do not show me cars because I'm not in the mood of buying cars. I'm showing yeah. I want to fish. So uh, how much of that uh, do you think is uh, true well, with your experience or? I also believe personally that contextual advertising, that's what, that's what it's called when you go on a, a website about fish, you would get on ads on your fish, um, would work quite well. Uh, and for that, you don't actually need to track users. Uh, you, you can do that without tracking. But the thing is, uh, for peer level targeting, um, ad networks track users. And when, when you ask them, OK, how much? Uh, how much uh, contextual ads uh, when you convert to um, variable targeted ads? Say like variable targeted advertising being uh, like 10 times more money. And the click-through click -through ratio is way higher than for, for contextual ads. So um, I would be interested in reading the paper. But uh, normally, really the industry say that uh, variable targeted ads are uh, much, at much higher rates than uh, contextual ads. And one of the reasons is that um, for example, in the SFR example, uh, you go on the website, you're not sure you want to be to buy something. Um, and so they, well, they, they will show you ads uh, all, all over the place about SFR. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's true. I mean, I mean I don't, how many of you use Adblock Network? Uh, something like Adblock or. Because uh, I was really surprised when I disabled Adblock to see how many ads were uh, relevant to. Um, were basically based on my browsing history. And you, you go on a website like American Online, and later on, for on, on the uh, next 10 page, you see what you will see the ads uh, for uh, American Online. And so always like that. How many people click on ads? Just to. In this room, do anybody has ever clicked once on an ad? <laughs> <laughs> Mistake. <laughs> <laughs> How many not made mistakes? I think also it's because. Uh, no, no, but I mean, no. already, it, what you replied to me, so it explained it much better than the way the question was asked. So, with the difference between contextual and target advertisement, he said that the call is 10 times higher. So, the paper is on communication magazine, uh, yeah, MCM or ECD issue. Well, I, I'm not an expert. Then, personally, you would ever click on that, so I'm just uh, cool. Mm -hmm. no. They're nice ads. Huh? <laughs> They're nice ads, you know, really interactive ones. Yeah, but <laughs> it's similar yeah, to, awesome. I guess it's similar to the spam market. Mm -hmm. yes. There was this nice study yeah. from Joseph Volker. Mm -hmm. And also, the spam market. And also it's because the, the web page, it's not uh, about the context. For example, if you are in a, a dictionary page, mm -hmm. You will not uh, get uh, ads about the uh, dictionary. No. So you can get ads yeah, about the yeah. things about you are searching. Sorry? About you can get word. ads about the <laughs> things you are searching on the dictionary. Mm, not really. It's, it's like to try to discern that you are working, but you get ads that can, can put you off. Uh, the context, I don't know if... Uh, well, you don't click any, okay, but uh, if you read the advertisement in the magazine, do you watch the advertisement on TV? I think no. Yeah. Neither. I mean, <laughs> because you don't like advertisement, that's it. Neither. 
also, what I was saying yeah, yeah. here is that sometimes you, well, for the way it's uh, calculated, uh, even if you don't click on the ad, like you, you, you go on the moment that you are, you see uh, an, ad, an ad about SFR, you don't click on the ad, but five minutes later you go on SFR at the park, uh, SFR gets the money, uh, uh, Google gets the money for the advertising. They assume that uh, they use the tracking cookies, the convert that's called conversion. <laughs> they assume that uh, you went on the website because you saw that. Because it's sublime enough. Yeah. 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 And that's, yeah, that's the, so the whole point with uh, variable targeting and uh, market analysis is that they're able to track you all the time. And so they're able to, to measure this kind of thing. But, yeah, I, was, I was wondering what is the money, how could monetize agnostic? Because nobody likes ads. So. Who has the incentive to, 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 to keep it running and to well, well, the thing is, um, I like nobody, well, some people <laughs> like that. And because uh, when you check, um, well, there are some interesting papers about, about, uh, about that by uh, Alessandro Acquisti uh, on uh, privacy economics. And the thing is, um, on, so he shows that on one side, you have like Facebook just displaying ads all the time. And you have users, well, just using, uh, playing uh, Angry Birds. But, uh, well, users are just playing a little bit, whereas on the other side, Facebook is making billions of dollars just, just with ads. So some people must like ads at some point, because <laughs> there's, there's uh, I don't know, it's even... But if they like ads, I mean, <coughs> if you narrow up people that like ads, what is the because um, if if we well if, if the thing is if we have do not track the world for all the population all the time, it, it, um, I, I I believe that social well when you ask um, they, they, with this solution they're not too much track they are still uh, we, we have to realize that the ad network is not is somehow trustworthy it, it does not have any longer to to keep uh, information about which site you visit very cool mm -hmm. because here. When you, when you when you send the request, actually, it, it could check the refer and say, okay, it was on this website, so um, it could it could use the data. Um, um, well, I guess uh, some user cares about privacy may still on the website they are visiting, getting some money. So that, that the, the main thing is that uh, the industry really is telling us that uh, we need the real targeting because that's the way we make money. And so the, the question um, being like, is the, the network sustainable without ads? As uh, Google is earning, I don't know, uh, perhaps nine percent of its benefits. Um, I mean, huge uh, percentage of their benefits. So let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, they tend to say that it's not. Uh, well, I, I, for them, even just contextual advertisement. Uh, we wouldn't bring enough money to, to add the uh, uh, free content that we have right now. And because they really say that much, much of it is not about the ad, but about the uh, research marketing that, that, that you can do with the ad. Um, and it's, it's not only about, um, about uh, advertising shoes or, or uh, things that you can buy. Uh, currently in the US, what, what they do is that they, target, they use ta targeted uh, advertisements for uh, the, uh, um, for the presidential election, so they, they, the, the, they can target the campaign to the right person, knowing which website you visited, which what what is your uh, political orientation, and then they send you the right ads to incite you to vote for the right candidate. Here there is not a trust issue because your software could uh, always bill uh, a, another publisher than the one that uh, I mean you, you could show an ad and then say that I sold another to the jury. <laughs> this is how you work. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> Then, uh, well, the, you have to trust the browser. And normally, the browser I trust the software. <laughs> no, I mean, the publisher should trust your software. It should be their open source, or they should be sure that you play fair, because otherwise they wouldn't, they don't have any reason to trust your billing uh, token. Um, well, they could try to, they could try to compare that to, uh, the, the click ratio that they get from the ad is like with agnostic to the click, click through ratio that they, they get from other ads. Assuming that there, there are still people not using agnostic and that they, they can measure the click through ratio for, for real ad, for ad display. But since the click rate is so low, I think the, 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 
the confidence, the statistical confidence wouldn't be. I mean, you could do a strategy good enough to play with this and still uh, benefit to one publisher or the other. No? I mean, you could be very clever as they are trying to check if you are correct. No? Um, yeah, if, if, if you, well, <laughs> if the brother is corrupted or if uh, the extension is corrupted, then that's not the problem. Yeah. Um, you have to press uh, the brother extension. Right.